Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about the strongest characters that you're probably not using, the most underrated characters in Genshin Impact. Before I begin, I want to say that it is quite difficult to evaluate who really is underrated because people's opinions on characters, um, you know, vary from person to person, but this is going from what the majority of people think from the videos I've seen, the comments I've seen, and just the general sort of opinions on a lot of these characters. I'm going to be describing what's so strong about every character I'm going to talk about and why I think they're underrated, mainly sort of debunking the myths surrounding their weaknesses. For example, a lot of characters I'm going to be talking about, people will widely overestimate the amount of energy they need, the amount of energy recharge that is required on them, think that they're unviable because you can't spam their bursts, when that is not at all true. Every character in this video is very strong and honestly underrepresented slash underrated, so I want to talk to you guys about them so that you can use them, and to basically show you guys the full potential of every one of these characters. Before I begin, I want you guys to know that I stream almost every night on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and with that being said, let's get into it. First of all, I want to say the most important information that I've been having having to repeat on my stream basically every day for the past few months. The reason a lot of characters are underrated is because yes, energy problems are usually overvalued, people think characters need much more energy recharge than they actually need, but I'd say the main reason is because people tend to underestimate how important AoE is. What I mean by that is a lot of the endgame content, in fact all of the endgame content, notably every single one of the last abyss floors, so 9, 10, 11, and 12, are currently and have basically always been multiple enemies. Because of that, characters that do single target damage are usually less valuable than characters that can do a lot of AoE. You guys will see the characters I talk about in this video, but a lot of the strong characters that people don't really talk about are characters that can do solid damage to everything around them at once. And having good AoE damage, being able to clear an abyss floor with 10 enemies is a lot more important than being able to clear a single boss, given the current uh, endgame content of Genshin Impact. And this might change in the future, but for now, and for all of like Genshin's history, the endgame content has basically always been a lot of enemies, which is why characters that are good against multiple enemies are so strong. And so keep that in mind for this video because I believe that is one of the reasons why people tend to undervalue a lot of characters and overhype uh, some that are especially good in single target situations. With that being said, let's talk about the most underrated characters in Genshin Impact. The first character I want to talk about is Beidou. I believe Beidou is one of the most underrated characters in Genshin because of how strong she is and a lot of the misconceptions surrounding her kit. Before I even show you guys some footage of her destroying everything, let's just take a look at her scaling. Her burst, Stormbreaker, is an ability that bounces between enemies when you attack. And this can be an off-field ability, let's say with child auto-attacking, your burst is going to bounce between enemies, dealing a large amount of damage. This scaling may not seem high, but it's what happens every single bounce and your ult bounces a lot, especially if you have her second constellation, which is in my opinion her best one, letting your burst jump between two additional targets. That being said, even without constellations, even at C0, Beto's burst will bounce between a lot of enemies if you are fighting multiple, allowing you to rapidly take care of all of them at once. On top of that, if you're against exactly two enemies, her damage spikes and reaches its peak because it'll constantly bounce between just those two, dealing an insane amount of damage, making her very strong against two enemies. Even against more than two, against just a lot of enemies, she's still very strong as a powerful burst support or even a main carry. And the main reason why some people dislike her is because of this energy cost. The AD energy cost is quite high and it might scare some people away. But as you guys will see in the footage, I get my burst back basically on cooldown with quite low energy recharge. I'm usually on somewhere between 130 to 140 ER just off of substats, and I get to spam my burst on cooldown because of another character, Fischl. Running Beto with Fischl is what makes Beto so good in my opinion. Not only do they cover each other's weaknesses, but Fischl acts as an electro battery. Her Oz will generate a ton of electro particles just all the time, feeding energy to your Beto non-stop, allowing her to spam her burst on cooldown even without a lot of energy recharge. And to specify you might need more or less energy recharge depending on how you play Beto. If she's on field as a DPS or uh, as your sub DPS for child, you won't need as much as if she's always off field uh, getting particles that way. But overall, you can play around the AD energy cost and make it not that big of a deal. On top of that, her elemental skill, her parry, is very strong, especially if you can use it correctly. If you can do a perfect counter, which is pressing E as soon as you get hit, it'll deal massive amounts of damage to everything around you, also generating a lot of particles. And if you can spam this on cooldown, it greatly increases your damage. If all that wasn't enough, her burst also snapshots, which means you just have to buff it at the start to buff the whole duration. So you Bennett burst and then you uh, Beto burst. And even if you run out of Bennett burst or if the buffs would normally expire, they'll still last the whole duration of your burst because it snapshots. So overall, Beto is an extremely strong Electro character who's great as DPS and support and who is often underrated because of the high energy cost of her Stormbreaker, but you can easily get around that if you just run her with Fischl. The next character I want to talk about is Jean. Jean is a character that I don't see getting enough praise because she really is a very strong support. She does everything you want in a character. 
She can heal you. She can cleanse you, which can be very strong in uh, a lot of different abyss floors removing any debuffs that can be annoying from you. She also deals a lot of damage with her elemental skill and her burst that actually have pretty good scalings. As you guys can see, my talent levels are very low. They're only level six and it's 400% on her E and 595, basically 600% on the initial hit of her burst. And this is sort of bonus damage that you get from just being a healer. While you're healing, you're gonna be doing this much damage, which is very nice. Jean can also abuse fall damage with her skill and her charge attack, which can be really good in certain abyss floors. On top of that, one of Jean's best features is that she can actually use the Verdescent Venerer set. This is a set for Anemo characters. You swirl and then it decreases the resistance of opponents by 40% to whatever you swirl, which is extremely strong if you can use it. A character like Jean will swirl without even having to try. Her burst and her skill can both swirl. And if you're running an elemental DPS or even an elemental support like Fischl, like Xing Chu, decreasing the resistance of opponents by 40% is pretty huge. And I feel like having this much versatility and this many good features on one character makes her very strong and stronger than a lot of people give her credit for. Being able to run the Verdescent Venator set, deal a lot of damage, cleanse and heal very, very efficiently, right? Jean heals a very big amount with her ult, instantly healing all of your party members without even having to swap into them. She also scales really well with investment, which is why some early game players might underrate her. But for all the reasons that I just listed, I believe she's very strong, underrated, and someone you should use if you do have her. The next character I want to talk about is one who's been very underrated since the launch of Genshin Impact. He's a free-to-play character who I made a guide on recently, and that character is Kaya. Kaya is extremely flexible because he can be a strong DPS in like a freeze comp. He can also be a great off-field support or like a sub DPS who can apply cryo to enemies and deal massive amounts of damage with his strong burst. He can also be used in quick swap teams like a reverse melt quick swap that you guys are seeing on screen now where you spam your abilities on every character allowing your Kaya and your Rosaria to proc melt on their hits and they both deal a ton of damage in this team comp. I honestly believe that the fact that he's free made him underrated because people assume that he's not as good as some other characters but a lot of Kaya's best comps are actually comparable DPS wise to a lot of the meta teams out there right now and in terms of the best like four star teams in Genshin, Kaya is in quite a few of them. His freeze comp and his quick swap comp are both very good and his freeze team in particular is great because you can run the four piece blizzard Slayer set which gives you 40% crit rate and 15% cryo damage bonus and then your burst which has a fast cryo application and a very high scaling will perma freeze enemies, deal a lot of damage and then if you run him with Chongyun, all your attacks will be cryo as well. And another beauty of this team is this Blizzard Share set, which gives 40% crit rate, paired with the cryo resonance, which gives even more crit rate, allows you to effectively stack crit damage on your Kaya, since you will get a ton of crit rate from external sources. And so you can have a ton of damage just by stacking that one stat. And as a bonus to the section, I think Rosaria is also underrated, notably in the Melt Quick Swap team with Kaya, and for the crit rate that she gives your whole team, paired with the high scaling on her burst, makes her a very strong cryo support that people don't talk about enough. That being said, I don't want to include a full section on her because she's similar to Kea, and I feel like she's less underrated than uh, Kea, which is why I'm focusing on him. The next character I want to talk about is thankfully someone who's been getting a lot more praise recently, so you might think they're not underrated, but trust me, people still don't get how broken this character is. This is a character I've been talking about for months, over half a year on my stream, and someone who theory crafters have been loving. That character is Shang Ling. Now I'm going to try to keep this section kind of brief because I talk about her a lot, and as I said, a lot of people have been talking about the sort of national team, but people still don't understand that Shang Ling is potentially the strongest pyro carry because of how her pyro nato works. Now I do say potentially because it depends on the situation, I don't want to start a huge debate here. Characters like Hu Tao can be stronger in single target situations or against few enemies because Hu Tao's damage is so strong against one enemy if you can spam your charge attacks against it. However, against many enemies, a character like Shang Ling shines exceptionally well because her pyro nato is going to hit everything at once. On top of that, you can vaporize all your hits if you run her with Child or Xing Chu and you just spam auto attacks to apply that hydro. Again, similarly with Beidou, people might think that her burst has a too high energy cost of 80, but it's very easy to play around this in a similar way to Beidou. If you're running her as your main carry, you really don't need a lot of energy as long as you run her with Bennett, who acts as a pyro battery. I basically funnel particles into my Shang Ling by using E on Bennett, swapping to Shang Ling, and picking up the particles on her, allowing me to effectively spam my burst on cooldown without a lot of energy recharge. I usually run her on about 140, and it's more than enough if she is my carry. And lastly, for sort of comfy gameplay, let's say you're playing her as a support and you're not the best at giving her all of your particles, you can still run more energy recharge, like ER on your sands or substats, and you'll still deal a ton of damage because of how high this Pyronado scaling is. As you guys can see, 213% on every single Pyronado hit, and it spins around you for 10 seconds, 
actually 14 seconds if you have her C4, which is one of the strongest constellations in the game. If you have this, your uptime is 14 out of 20 seconds, and during its uptime, you can do anything. The thing is, with Shangling's Pyronado, when it's spinning, it's an off-field ability, which means you can DPS on another character like Child, or you can funnel particles into her, you can do literally anything else. It's just this consistent damage that you don't really have to think about because it's just happening all the time. And if I haven't already convinced you, one of the best features of Shangling or her Pyronado is that it snapshots. All the buffs given to it at the start will snapshot for the entire duration, which means you don't have to worry about them. Thrilling Tales, Sucrose's Elemental Mastery, Bennett's Burst, and Noblesse Oblige will all snapshot into your Pyronado, buffing it an insane amount for the entire duration as long as you have it up for the first second that you use it. And just in case I didn't make it clear enough, the main reason I love Shangling so much is because of how good her AoE is, her Pyronado literally hits everything around her with really good scaling, consistently vaporizing, making her very good for all the endgame content. And so I'm happy she's finally starting to get recognition, people are finally realizing that she's good, however as of right now she is still very underrated. The next character I have to include in this video is GeoMC. This is one of the weirder ones because GeoMC gets literally no love. The main character, Luminar Aether, with the Geo element is actually quite powerful and can be a sort of free-to-play albedo. And while all the other characters in the video I believe are top tier, I don't believe GeoMC is the same power level, however she is a very strong option for specific comps. For example, if you need a Geo battery, like in a Ningguang team, or if like you're running Zhongli and you want the Geo resonance or to spam your burst, running MC can be a great Geo battery and can do a lot of things. First of all, her elemental skill has a very high scaling at only level 9, while level 6 plus uh, 3 levels with the constellations that you get for free, and it also has a very low cooldown. And your elemental burst also has a good scaling, 252% at a pretty low level, given the free constellation that levels it up. It'll unleash multiple shockwaves all around you, damaging every single enemy that surrounds you. On top of that, the cooldown and the energy cost are quite low, and most importantly, this also gives you crit rate. This is because of your constellations, and the free constellations you guys get on the main character are actually very strong. Your party members gain 10% crit rate from your burst, and your C2 literally doubles the damage of your elemental skill if you can use it. The problem is, MC is actually really hard to use, uh, because you do want to make sure that your C2 is proccing. Basically, what your C2 does is when your uh, elemental skill, your meteorite, is destroyed, it'll deal the same amount of damage that it did initially. Therefore, it doubles the damage of your skill, so if you can utilize this constellation, you effectively deal twice as much damage, and if you can play uh, the main character properly, I believe they're a strong underrated unit. The main problem is that this character is quite difficult to use efficiently, uh, but that being said, I do believe they're very underrated, mainly for the high damage they deal, the energy they generate for you, the free constellations you get which are nice, giving you once again more damage and crit rate, and lastly since they're a geo character, they also give you uh, access to the geo resonance with one other geo character. The next character I want to talk about is one that I was debating whether or not I should include in this video, but I believe they are very underrated and probably the most misunderstood character. Now, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I've been always saying that Child is pretty strong. However, I feel like people have really strong opinions on him. People either love him or hate him, and I feel like he's often misunderstood because he's not just a DPS. Yes, he can be flexible and have multiple roles and can be played as a DPS, but I believe he shines exceptionally well as an enabler. And what that means is while he's gonna be your on-field auto attacker, right, your sort of typical DPS, he can enable your off-field supports to deal massive amounts of damage, dealing even more than your child himself. Comps that run child and Beto, child and Shang Ling. Child is going to be the one auto attacking, applying hydro very fast, and uh, proccing Riptide, which does damage to multiple enemies at once, but what he mainly does is allow your off-field supports to carry. Shang Ling, paired with Child, will vaporize every single hit of her Pyronado, while Child is auto-attacking, dealing a bunch of hydro damage, and so effectively you have Child's damage and Shang Ling's damage, being able to literally clear everything super fast. On top of that, during Child's downtime, because his E does have a pretty long cooldown, you can use that time to DPS on Shang Ling and get her burst back. You can funnel particles from your Bennett, as we talked about earlier, in order to effectively have no downtime on your Pyronado. On top of that, the Beto comp that we saw earlier, Beto, Fischl, and Child, the fireworks team, is very, very strong and it's enabled by Child. Since Child attacks so fast, he allows Fischl and Beto to deal a ton of damage with their abilities, right? Because a lot of their damage procs on your normal attacks, and you also get to spam Electro Charge, which is nice bonus damage, and so I believe that Child as an enabler is extremely strong, and he can effectively act as a second Shang Chu, who also shines exceptionally well in AoE situations against a lot of enemies, spamming your Riptide can be very good, and make him a powerful on-field enabler and DPS. I now very quickly want to include some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut because they're characters that I believe are underrated, but not to the same extent as others. For example, Xiao is a character who's played a lot but I don't think people fully understand how broken he is, because given the current endgame content, which is a lot of enemies, 
Shao shines exceptionally well there, since all the damage he can deal to one enemy, he can also deal to 5 or 10 if they're around him, and as with many other characters in this video, his energy problems are also uh, overrated. I also believe a character like Albedo doesn't get enough love, since he can be a very solid replacement for basically any character you don't have in a lot of teams. He's pretty consistent and only bad in a few reaction comps that don't want Albedo there, applying Geo. Also, Catalyst users like Barbara may seem bad, but since they can use the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, they can actually have a pretty significant role in many teams. For example, if you put her in a Shao team, giving your Shao this 48% attack is very good, but this isn't so much Barbara being uh, underrated as Thrilling Tales, so that's my reasoning for not including her. But apart from that, I honestly believe a lot of characters are overrated, but we're not going to get into that right now. This video honestly took way longer than expected to make because I needed so much footage of like every team doing stuff, so I apologize if it was a lot of just Abyss, but <laughs> that is the endgame content. And since I talked about Shangling, Beto, and Child, I'm sure there was a lot of Child footage in the video, but that just goes to show you how important of a character he is because he is a great enabler. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I tried to cover all the most underrated characters in Genshin Impact without taking too much time. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow me on Twitch if you want to catch me live. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.